Joining me now, Brian Sussman he is the author of Eco Tyranny How the Left's Green Agenda Will Dismantle America. Chris Horner, senior fellow at the Com uh, Competitive uh, Enterprise Institute, author of Power Grab How Obama's Green Policies Will Steal Your Freedom and Bankrupt America, and GBTV's own local glo global warming expert, Stu Begeer, who how many years ago, Stu, did I put you in charge of this? That was around the time Gore's movie came out. Yeah, and I said, I really don't, I don't care about Al Gore at all. And, um, and you, you tortured are, me and made me watch it. Right. And <laughs> you are a, you are a, um, a statistical kind of guy. You read all the stats. And you were afraid when I went to the uh, Al Gore movie. Remember? Well, I, I didn't want you to be, you know, won over by his nonsense at the time. I mean, it would, seemed like everybody was being won right. over by it. And, you know, you really have to you have to really look into it deeply. And that's why I think it's such a popular argument, because on the surface, everyone loves the earth. And you know that if I thought it was true, I would have said so. Yeah. And uh, I went to it and I said to Stu, I told him not to uh, influence me beforehand. I went to him and I said, if these things are true, it, we have to be on that side. And then we went through the stats little by little. And I think, Chris, that's the time we called you. Mm -hmm. I told you before we went on the air, I think you're the longest running truth teller guest on my show. You've been on CNN, you've been on Fox, and you've been on this program. Mm -hmm. Consistent the whole time in saying the brave truth. And you also help piece it together. And it's complete nonsense. Now, let me get to, let me get to you. This is a, um, a global agenda that doesn't strike me at all as science, but all about control. Totally about control. It's, we all want clean air. We all want clean water. Stu said, we all love the earth. I mean, this is our home. But the left has been using this climate scare since 1883 to try hammer capitalism, destroy free markets, and especially target the United States of America. 1883, first guys to proclaim a climate disaster because of mankind's pollution, Frederick Engels and Karl Marx, 1883. Holy cow, what was the claim? Well, they said that, uh, well, you know, this was the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Right. And they saw the smoke and they said, you know, we just, we hate capitalism. Look at the Industrial Revo Revolution. Look at all of this smoke. Maybe the smoke will go up into the sky, block the sun, bring about another ice age, and destroy all species on the planet because they always believed that man kind was a population bomb so this was their big theory 1883 dialectics of nature that was the that, that has been the big thing one way or another that man is the enemy that man is i mean it was the in the 1960s i did this weird interview with william shatner anybody see that when i was it was bizarre he said he watches me every day he said because you're like watching a fire <laughs> just watching a house burn down to the ground and he told me he said you don't believe in population control and I said no I don't he said the population bomb and I'm like hello mister 1968 <laughs> it's the same story over and over again it's always been well a, a guy from Chicago I think his name was Saul indicated that the issue <laughs> isn't the issue the issue is a vehicle it's an excuse to do what we want to do and this is the one they'll ride until they can't it's always been about people with a footnote, it's always been about other people, okay? They don't show much leadership on this front. It's always depopulation, population right. bomb, et cetera. But we're always, it's this Malthusian business that we're always going to outstrip our resources, ignoring how resourceful man is. However, obsessed with this idea, first of, as you said, control, this is uh, the left's long-held desire for industrial policy, what we call picking winners and losers. And it's wedded to the environmentalist long-held desire for scarcity, energy scarcity. And it's wrapped up in this economic baby talk about, well, we can, if we can design, we can, if we make you do, make, or destroy something, you'll have to hire somebody to do it, so that's good for the economy. But ultimately, it comes down to people, and it's always other people. And in fact, if you, there's a new movement out called the Club for Degrowth. It's the World Wildlife Fund, which is the only mm, organization oh, yeah. that sells an annual end of the earth report with a subscription card for next year's issue in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and they've got the club for degrowth, and they say it's not what it sounds like. And then you read it, and they say you have to re reduce the size of your economy by two-fifths. But we're not talking about not growing. We're talking about a responsible way of growing mm -hmm. by shrinking. 
and it always comes down, there's just, there's just enough of them, way too many of you and me. And that's really the only proven way to reduce emissions, is complete economic catastrophe over a long period of time. And, you know, World Wildlife Foundation is, is an organization that I went into, like, a FedEx store the other day and got copy paper, and part of my copy paper purchase went to the World Wildlife Foundation. But you know what? That all comes from scare tactics. Yeah. It all comes from scare tactics. We are so, as a people and the companies, they're so good at surrounding these companies that if they don't do it, they're just like, they're just like, you know what, just make these people go away. Just make them go away. And so we're funding them. You go and you buy that copy paper, you're funding these people who want to stop all energy. Sure. Well, so, that's social equity, and that's being tied to sustainable development. So it's use, use the environment and use these phony baloney junk science issues as an opportunity to transfer wealth. You know, maybe it's wealth to the World Wildlife Fund. Maybe it's our wealth to a third world country. Maybe it's our wealth to a poor community. But that's what this sustainable development thing is all okay. about. A sustainable development. How many people have heard of Agenda 21? Okay. Agenda 21. Spooky as hell, isn't it? But it's all cloaked as, oh, this is Right. I mean, the name Agenda 21 sounds like some kind of really spooky science fiction thing. Um, I, when I first talked about this on, on Fox, I can't tell you the number of people who went out and went and got and, and started going to their city council meetings. And people in small towns were saying, my gosh, it's in our small town. Well, you started the movement. Mm -hmm. It's nationwide. People are doing this nationwide. It's amazing. Yeah. So, so explain what it is. Well, because it sounds like conspiracy. No, theory. you sound like you have tin foil on your head. Yeah. But it's the agenda for the 21st century rolled out at the 1992 Rio Earth Summit, and they're trying to bring it back during this current uh, summit in Rio. But the idea is this is sustainable development concocted in the mind of a guy that you've done a lot of stories on, Maurice Strong. His resume is more more uh, mysterious than Barack Obama's. And he put together this plan, and at the root of it, mankind is evil. It's an assault on mankind. So Agenda 21 wants to change the way in which we consume, change our lifestyle, change economies, and hammer, again, capitalism and free markets and life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which Agenda 21 sees as nonsense. Okay, help me out. G give me, some, give me some, um, some hardcore facts to walk away with on Agenda, Agenda 21. If people have not heard of Agenda 21... Anybody? Agenda 21 uh, demands, for example, uh, high-speed rail. We've got these high-speed rail plans all over the country. But they see it primarily as a jobs program. Uh, Agenda 21 brought forth the whole green jobs notion. It pushes uh, alternative energy like nobody's business. It does not believe that property is a personal right. It believes that all natural resources belong to the state, not to individuals to make a profit off of. This is, you know, that's, that's uh, Theodore Roosevelt. I mean, Theodore Roosevelt was right down that same road. Um, go ahead. There's Chris. one other specific. I've been handed uh, the working drafts of these documents for the Rio summit over the past year and a half by one of the negotiators. And he sent me by email after the recent New York uh, negotiating session the, the draft declaration because they, it was supposed to have a, a green jobs treaty. But the Solyndra summit was not something our president needed right now. They couldn't agree on it. And so they've got a declaration. And it's to fill the gaps left after Agenda 21 and the Johannesburg de Declaration 10 years later. I attended that one. Mugabe and Castro got standing O's. Uh, and Colin Powell was booed down. Um, Unbelievable. And in it, they have decided that the United States uh, all, select wealthy countries. Uh, Germany? I don't know who they're talking about. But the United States is to give 0.7% of our GDP every year to the UN development programs with a taste on top because, you know, they're going to have to, they don't want to choke on that bag of money, so they got to get, get a little bit bigger to manage it. 0 0.7 is not random. It turns, it just, if you run the numbers, that's $100 billion per year. It's a figure that applies to everybody but was clearly targeted at us. 0.7% of our GDP, $100 billion every year. We have to do it fast because of the uncertainty is causing the poor deer's heartburn. They're having a hard time planning because we haven't promised the money yet. That's actually in there. You have to get down past the transgender, the, the women's equity, and so on. It's easy to forget that this is about addressing an urgent environmental crisis, right. reading this deathless thing. But then they get to the money. And it's $100 billion each year just from us to pay countries with their own space programs, like India, to develop 
however they wish, but they'll call it sustainable, which means ration to, certain of us must ration today so we won't have to ration tomorrow. This will be agreed upon at Rio at this current conference. Okay. But politically binding. Hey, hang on just a second. I, I, have to, I have to ask you this, because I think in looking at the movement, the Tea Party movement, if you will, we were their worst nightmare because they were attacking from the top and we did true ground, you know, ground um, troops, real grassroots stuff. And we started at the top and were stonewalled so immediately as entrepreneurs, we just went, broke it down, figured it out, did things like Freedom Works, but then went into our local um, uh, towns and started down from the bottom. That's the right way to do it. But Agenda 21, that's, that's their plan. While we're looking up here at the UN, they're in our local towns, right? Absolutely. They've made it into, they have reached their tentacles into every aspect of government in the United States. Small towns, counties, states. Any way to get out of this? Yes. My county withdrew. Albemarle County, Virginia withdrew. Uh, I think a dozen U.S. counties have withdrawn. And all we did was attend, and I only I heard the proceedings on the radio, read Agenda 21 documents, ICLEI, I-C-L-E-I, -E I-C-L-E-I. Mm -hmm. They've changed their name because some people have done a very good job of outing them. <laughs> and they just read the documents, had the crowd yell conspiracy theory, and said, guess what I'm reading? And it was ICLEI's documents. And Albemarle County, which is University of Virginia, Berkeley East, withdrew. Wow. And there have been a dozen, Carroll County, Maryland, I believe, and about a dozen counties. And it is... It is so bad they've changed their name. You know they have to rebrand. You know you're onto something. Well, yeah, uh, but that's what progressives always do. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what they always do. It's amazing, though. How did we get on the hateful side of this argument? I right. mean, you have uh, a program that's going to give you know, its share of a $100 billion lottery to Robert Mugabe. And here we are on the other side saying we shouldn't restrict in cheap energy to third world countries. I mean, Africa is only going to improve and become part of the first world when it's able to actually use all of its resources and burn energy like we were able to burn energy. And it's instead of trying to push solar panels and expensive forms of energy that they can't really ever utilize because they're not reliable and they cost way too much money when you can't even feed yourself, we are the hateful ones somehow for wanting them to be able to you know, take the same sort of route that we did, the one that, you know, when we have, the Earth has a plentiful supply of fossil fuels. Well, the, the amazing thing is, is that what capitalism has done for the world. I mean, we have, we have changed, we've taught, we literally brought the world out of darkness oh, yeah. for the first time in human history. And that just gets brushed aside. Sure. I mean, capitalism, free enterprise, great ideas. Coal saved the forests. Mm -hmm. Oil saved the whales. I mean, these are, these are real resources that we used to do good things for the planet. And yet, you're right, Stu. I mean, we, and they turn it around in a very clever way to make us look like the bad guy when, in fact, you know, we're for life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. We're for people. And when I look at the plans that these environmentalists have for people... They're not. They're not for people no, at all. They're really not. It, you know, it's really scary. And this is... I know this sounds crazy to say, but almost everything I've said in the last five years or so sounds crazy. <laughs> and then it happens. <laughs> um, uh, it sounds crazy to say, but you understand, you know, that FBI videotape that we have uh, from the guy who went undercover with Bill Ayers Group. And he said, you know, we're going to have to round up about 25 million Americans because they just won't go with this. And we'll have to run up 25 million people, and about 25 million people are going to have to be, um, uh, what did he say, liquidated or something like that. That's crazy. But to save the planet, if you believe in collective salvation, mm -hmm. these are exactly the kinds of plans that lead to that kind of stuff. Because man is at the bottom of the food chain. Yeah. Well, they're materialists, so they believe you're no different than a, a redwood tree or a, right. or a darter snake. Or daughter snail, I should say. The only difference is your molecules and atoms are arranged differently. But in fact, actually, you should be discriminated against because you're the one species that can destroy all the rest of them. That's the mindset of these materialist leftists. We're a cancer. We're a virus. In that first book, The Politically Incorrect Guide, I quote them throughout so you yeah. can bring this to your teachers. Carl Amory was a German Green Party official who said, We desire to create a society where it's considered a greater crime to clear a forest than sell six-year-old children to Asian brothels. Hmm. This isn't just some guy up the street, it's one of their guys. And the book, it's full of that because they, we have a million of them because they speak. Maury Strong, you'd never know it. These are establishment types. I testified next to him, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Very quiet, hi, hi maybe we could work together. Slip me his card. You'd never know. The guy Charles Worcester with Environmental Defense who said that's as good a way to get rid of them as any when he was talking about babies who didn't look like him. Hmm. If we ban DDT, 
Well, he got elevated to the Board of Environmental Defense from being their chief scientist. These aren't random lunatics. These are their guys. The IPCC head of the green economy says it's about redistributing wealth. He's not some random guy who wandered into an interview. He's their guy. In fact, he's our guy. We uh, approved his nomination. Um, I want you to notice the T-shirt that we're, we just started making. Two plus two does not equal five. It equals four every time. Two plus two. Don't take, don't take any of our word for it. Do your own homework and find out if Agenda 21 is in your town and get active and stop it dead in its tracks. When you educate people on this and you don't allow people just to say, oh, you're crazy, that's just about... Just do your own homework. It's all there. Tell them, do your own homework. Look it all up. It's all there out in the open. And there are a lot of great uh, resources um, that will help you on that journey. But stop it dead in its tracks. Back in a minute.